This is Masood Ashmi. Today we're going to talk about screening colonoscopy. So before we go into the screening colonoscopy, I want to know, I want to tell you what is a colon. Colon is a large intestine and basically it's, it's like an inverted U. This is the small bowel, which is coming towards this colon. This is called cecum. Appendix is here. So large bowel starts from here. This is ascending colon. Because it's going up. From here to here, it's transverse colon. Then it's come down here. This is the descending colon. And this is sigmoid colon. And this is the rectum. So the screener, screening colonoscopy uh, right now we do it for those people who have no symptoms. Usually nowadays it is from 45 to 50 years of age. So when you are 45 to 50 years of age, even if you don't have any symptoms, we do colonoscopy to look into the colon to make sure there is no polyps, there is no tumor, there is no problem with the colon. That's why it's called screening colonoscopy. The colonoscope is inserted from the rectum and it goes like this, comes like this. And when you come up here, then the procedure is done. And then after that, we pull it back slowly and we're looking through the camera in the scope and then scope comes out. So that way we look at entire colon and also sometimes we go into the small bowel, like roughly about a feet of small bowel and look at the terminal ileum also. So the screening colonoscopy means looking at the colon at the age 45 to age 50 to make sure there is no polyp, there is no tumor on a patient who is asymptomatic. He does not have any complaints. The colon itself is a storage organ. So from the stomach, the fluid and intestinal fluid comes with the, with the, with the food which we eat, comes here in the colon. The surface, the purpose of the colon is to absorb the fluid out of it. So when the same goes on here, it becomes like a solid stools. So in order to look into your colon, we need to clean the colon. We need to give a prep to clean it so that you can see the surface of the colon very well. So I'm going to talk to you later on about how do we do colonoscopy? What do you have to do? How do you prep your colon? And what do you have to expect during the procedure and after the procedure? This is a colonoscope and I want to show you the various controls for the colonoscope. Uh, up here, are, this, is the, this is the air water button, then this is the suction. And this area where we put the biopsy forceps are snared through that to take a biopsy of the tumor or to removal of a polyp. And this is the light source where this you attach to the light source and then the light goes from there and to the lower part of the uh, colonoscope. And this, and this is the area where you see the air water nozzle, objective lens, light guides, and then biopsy channel. So this image then is taken through the colonoscope and then it's shown on the camera, on the screen, and from where we do the, uh, we look at the colon and we manipulate the uh, colonoscopy. In order to learn colonoscopy, it's a tedious procedure. You need to really select good endoscopist who has a lot of experience in this because this instrument can uh, be difficult to handle and it requires a lot of practice. This is Masood Hashmi. So I'm going to show you today that how we prep the patient when he's coming for colonoscopy. 
So first of all, the prep, uh, if the endoscopist who is going to do your colonoscopy, usually they have printed all the directions for you. So you need to make sure that whatever way he recommends, you listen to this. But generally speaking, we, we, we give two kind of preps. One is the with clear liquid diet, laxatives and enemas. That's one way. The other option will be, there's a thing called go lightly or new lightly. It's the fluid which you drink one day before and take clear liquid that day. And then you come up for a colonoscopy in the morning. But this, these two preps, you have to ask the endoscopist how he wants you to do it. It's really his prerogative. The second thing is the medications, which medications you are taking. Now, the, if you are diabetic, you want to make sure you check your sugars because you will be on a clear liquid diet and your sugar might become very low. So you need to check your sugars. Blood pressure medications. Usually we keep the blood pressure on, medications on, but you need to ask your endoscopist or medical doctor what to do with this. Number three, the blood thinners. This is really important because during colonoscopy, we are removing the tumors from the polyp, from the colonoscopy, we're removing the polyps, are doing the biopsies, and if you're taking blood thinners, it can cause bleeding. So you need to ask them when to stop it, what kind of blood thinners you are on, you'll make sure you give them all the instruction. You, sh you tell them what you're taking. Now in the pre-op area, that's the next day when you come in for your endoscopy, uh, usually anesthesiologist talks to you. They're gonna start an IV on you because you are dehydrated due to this uh, prep you have taken. And they explain to you the procedure and then they take you to the room where the colonoscopy is being done. Okay, so I'm gonna show you this is a picture, I just made it on this for you, simple. So here's the endoscopy suite, okay? Here's the screen for the, where the image is going to come up here. Here's the IV is going, this is the patient laying on the left lateral position. And this is the IV in the hand. This is the patient. This is the nurse. She will be writing it down, you know, and watching the patient. Here's the anesthesiologist who's going to give you medication here to sedate you. And here's the endoscopist. This is the colonoscope, which he's going to insert from the anus and is he going to check your colon. So this is, this is the way usually the endoscopy suite looks. So first of all, patient lays down in left lateral position, anesthesia is given and the surgeon starts the scope. And then when the scope is done, usually this procedure takes up between roughly bit half an hour, maybe even less. And after that patient goes to recovery for recovery and about in one hour, whole thing is done and the patient goes home. Now I'm gonna show you what we see while we're doing colonoscopy and what, how we do with the procedures. So first of all, the colon, which I made it before, but I'm gonna show you again. So here's the colon. The scope is inserted from the anus and you look at the rectum, you look at the hemorrhoids, then you come up here. This is called sigmoid colon. Where you see these are diverticuli. These are the openings in the colon. These are called diverticuli and you, you're looking through it. You want to make sure you don't enter into the diverticulum. You check you, this is colonoscopy, you're coming, coming up towards the, this is called splenic flexure. Because the spleen is here. Since you are in a tube, how do you know where you are? So when the scope is coming here, you see blue sh shadow here from the colon. You see the blue shadow. So I know we have reached the splenic flexure. So from there, we go to the transverse colon. Now the transverse colon looks triangular in the scope. The image is triangular. So as soon as you go there and it, it shades circular to triangular, so I know I'm in this part of the colon. And then when scope comes here, which is called hepatic flexure, hepatic means liver. So liver is here. So similarly, liver casts a shadow here, a bluish shadow here. So then you see a shadow here, so you know you are in hepatic flexure. So if somebody have a tumor here, 
you know where the tumor is. So when you need surgery, you know how much the colon need to be dissected. So when the scope comes down, and this is the most important thing, this thing, this is called ileocecal valve, valve, where the small bar is entering the colon here in the cecum. So when we, when we see this, we know that we are in the lower part of the colon, where the colon starts actually, cecum. And the appendicular opening is here. So we, if, uh, so we look at the appendicular opening, so we know we are in the cecum. So this means you have done the colonoscopy all the way to the end. So then when you look for tumor, this is when you coming out. Is the coming out, you're slowly watching it, coming down. So there are a couple of things you need to see. If somebody have a, you can have a little polyp here. So in order to remove this polyp, you put a biopsy forceps through the colonoscope and you come here and you remove this through the scope. You remove it and you take it out and you write down polyp in the ascending colon. Then you send it to the lab. Now let's say if you have a polyp in, this, in the transverse colon and it's a big polyp like this. So then you put through the colonoscope an instrument called snare. So snare comes out and it like this, snare is like this and grabs the polyp and you burn with the, with the cartery and remove the polyp and then you mark down transverse colon polyp. Now let's say God forbid somebody have a cancer here, which you really cannot remove with a colonoscope. So then you take a biopsy for, so through the colonoscope and you take biopsies and you write down biopsy sigma colon tumor biopsy. So you know where the tumor is. Similarly, you come down, so you come down and you see another polyp here, you remove the polyp and then you mark the bottles. So you will have one, two, three, four, five bottles. And then you wait for pathology report. So when we're doing colonoscopy, we put air in the colon, which distends the colon so you can see. That's, and that's why the belly gets distended and you can see. So what are the main complications of colonoscopy? Very rare, but like I have done thousands of colonoscopy. I never had any hole in the colon. I had one patient who bled on me about 10 days later. So first of all, bleeding. Bleeding could be right at the time of colon, during the colonoscopy when you take a biopsy or something, but usually it stops. It's a small bleeding, especially when you're doing a biopsy for such. Now if the bleeding happens, here, when you're taking a polyp out, bleeds a lot, then endoscopist knows how to control the bleeding. So that's immediate bleeding. The other bleeding which happens could be 10 days later, because when this coagulation goes away, a patient can bleed, and 10 days later it can come back with the bleeding, and you know how to stop it. You scope the patient, you try to inject it, you try to cauterize it and to stop the bleeding. Most of the time that bleeding stops also. The other major complication is making a hole in the colon. Never happened to me, but it has happened to the best of the hand. That's a known complication, especially when you're doing snaring something and it makes a little hole in the colon. Are you taking, when you're doing a scope and it's a difficult colonoscopy, you can end up having a hole in the colon. In that situation, when a patient goes to recovery, he gets a lot of pain in the abdomen and you take an X-ray and you'll see free air, free air under the diaphragm. So then you know patient will need surgery. So these are the two major complications, but they are very, very rare. So they always tell you beforehand. So normally this colonoscopy is very safe. So the screening colonoscopy is done at the age 45 to 50 years of age, and it's done on people to make sure there is no polyp, there is no bleeding, there is no other disease, there is no inflammatory bowel disease. So I think, at this age, everybody should have a colonoscopy done. Thank you.